Let us pray. Almighty God, we bless you. You are our King, and we worship you. For Lord Jesus, you have been a servant King to us, our Redeemer, our Master, and the great lover of our souls. You have surrounded us with such kindness and mercy, and your grace to us extends over all things. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings to us, and we praise you, Almighty God, that you are ruler over all events and that all things are in your hands. Father, forgive our lack of trust and for not realizing that you are in all events. Help us to live trustingly and act with righteousness to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 25 and beginning at verse 1. Let us hear God's word. These are more Proverbs of Solomon copied by the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter is the glory of kings. As the heavens are high and the earth is deep, so the hearts of the kings are unsearchable. Remove the dross from the silver, and out comes material for the silversmith. Remove the wicked from the king's presence, and his throne will be established through righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence, and do not claim a place among the great. It is better for him to say, come up here, than for him to humiliate you before a nobleman. What you have seen with your eyes do not bring hastily to court, for what will you do in the end if your neighbor puts you to shame? If you argue your case with a neighbor, do not betray another man's confidence, or he who hears it may shame you, and you will never lose your bad reputation. A word amply spoken is like apples of gold set in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is a wise man's rebuke to a listening ear. Like the coolness of snow at harvest time is a trustworthy messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the spirit of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of gifts he does not give. Through patience a ruler can be persuaded, and a gentle tongue can break a bone. If you find honey, eat just enough, too much of it, and you will vomit. Seldom set your foot in your neighbor's house, too much of you, and he will hate you. Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is the man who gives false testimony against his neighbor. Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful in times of trouble. Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. As the north wind brings rain, so a sly tongue brings angry looks. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Like muddied spring or a polluted well is a righteous man who gives way to the wicked. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honourable to seek one's own honour. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word to our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings to us for the opportunities to work together again in ministry, for all the opportunities that we have to share and teach about you and to live alongside you day by day and to share that with our families and with others. We thank you that we have our church and our fellowship and that you have brought us through so many things. We thank you that your love and help is always with us and that you have purpose for our living days, 
and glory for our everlasting life ahead. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for those who grieve. Be our friend in sorrow, Lord, and help us in our grief. Thank you that no part of our sorrow is beyond your interest nor your care. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us throughout the whole of our lives, even to the very end. Help us, Lord, when our end draws near, and hold on to us and refresh our faith again. Daily help us in our physical weaknesses and carry us through. Give healing and release of pain according to your good grace and power for those who are suffering illness today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us in all of our life and we pray for young people in their studies in beginning work, in seeking work, and in their livelihoods. We ask, Lord, that you would help them to find the right open door for them, to continue faithfully in their studies and their work, and to be able, Lord, to build a livelihood for themselves. We pray, Lord, therefore, for our leaders in politics, in society, in church, and in your mission. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all those who have a role of leadership and authority among us. Lord, help them to make wise choices and guide things so that good may flourish to the glory of your name. We do pray, Lord, for our own congregation here. And as we work towards our organization starting again, we pray for our girls' brigade, for our CE and for our men's fellowship, and, Lord, for each of our ministries that we carry out. We ask that, Lord, you would be with each of our leaders and encourage them and help us to be wise in how we continue our ministries. And we pray, Lord, that you would watch over all that we do and that your Holy Spirit might bless it. In Jesus' name and to his glory we pray. Amen. Good morning. We are moving into Proverbs chapter 25. We spent a long time in the book of Proverbs. We have a little more to go before we get to the end. I want to take the whole of chapter 25 as one, and I intend to do this all the way through to chapter 29. We've been seeing how we are to live our own lives with wisdom, and then we saw how we were to reach out into society to influence it for wisdom and to help uh, people come to and lead their own lives in wisdom. We saw the limits of that as well. Uh, We had a couple of sayings added to those 30 sayings about reaching out into life. And now in chapter 25, we're still thinking about the situation in which in life you have come to some role of leadership, some role of influence in your society. Actually, I wouldn't say that this is much more than having grown up and become an adult and taking on adult responsibility in life. Whatever responsibility you take on in life, you are a leader within that. And I want you to think of that idea of being a leader, an influence, uh, an influencer, as they say today, uh, within that role of being parent. Uh, just ruling your own life, uh, sharing authority in work or in anything else, we are to influence our society for wisdom and for God. And in doing so, we are to learn from our Master, who actually taught from these Proverbs, as we'll see in many ways. Um, He taught lessons that are also found here in these Proverbs. Jesus taught us by his example and by his teaching how to be a servant king. And he told us that we were not to lord it over others, but rather that we were to be the one who was the servant seeking to bring good. We've seen that in Proverbs. We have seen that that's the aim of the true king, of the true leader, to make things better under God and to seek to influence the world in that way. 
Well, we're still thinking about that leadership, that authority, and how to exercise it as we look at Proverbs 25 today. It is God's greatness or God's honor to act in mysterious ways, but the glory of kings is to search things out. In other words, God may keep his own counsel, but a good king, a good leader, a good human leader is one who learns and explains and makes plain things that are not plain. Jesus told us that he taught only what his father gave him to teach. Now we are to understand in this proverb these two things as kind of complementary, as parallels. It is God's way to make and do things that are beyond us. God moves in mysterious ways. Now when we consider the wide universe or the detail of atoms that hold us together, we can be just caught in wonder trying to grasp even imaginatively the scale of creation. And then we think of how God directs all purposes towards his end. God moves in astonishing ways, far beyond us. But it is our proper way and duty to search things out, to learn them, to get deeper into them. And in doing so, we honor God for so he made us to do. It is God to, for God to act in mysterious ways, but it is for a good leader or a good king to act in plain ways and develop plain uh, paths of action according to what he learns as he studies the ways of the Lord. Someone who is truly a king or a leader then does have a heart or mind that is unsearchable. There are two ways to take this next proverb. Uh, to either kind of in despair say, oh, we, we don't know how kings manage and think about things. But actually, I think we're meant to take it the other way with a lot more hope and understand that the king who properly looks into the things of God, someone who really seeks to understand creation, to understand life and industry and work, and who then seeks to make plain plans of action, to explain things and to guide things. That's surely the role of a leader. They have a heart and a mind then that seems almost as mysterious to others as God is. The burden of leading is forever to be at least partially misunderstood. Only someone carrying the same role would ever understand it. You know, when I was growing up, they used to say, you cannot put an old head on young shoulders. And I used to rankle a bit against that. But the truth is, you can't. People who hold responsibility in our schools, in our government, in all sorts of situations around us, in our churches, and in our homes, our fathers and mothers, they carry weight and responsibility that we simply don't have to carry and make decisions that we simply don't have to make. It's not that we couldn't in their situation or we wouldn't, but we ought to respect that those who carry that responsibility are simply people like us, but they have to learn and diligently apply so that they can come up with plain plans of action. In other words, we should respect as leaders ourselves that leadership isn't easy. Take away the dross from the silver, that is, separate the, uh, the dross and the silver, the impurity and the silver, and there comes out for the smith a crafted object. The idea is that if you get rid of the dross and the silver, uh, then it can be worked on by the silversmith to make something beautiful and precious, and then parallel to that comes, take away the wicked from the presence of the king and his throne will be established in righteousness. The wicked people in question may be advising the king to evil or influencing his rule to evil. And if they are removed, that is, if the evil advice and influence is removed, then the king can establish a righteous and a good reign. Another way to look at this is to say, if a king removes the evil from the land, soon good will flourish. 
The point is that we take away what is corrupting and bad. If you like, one role for a king is to understand. Another role for a king is to be able to to take out of difficult, complicated things a plan of action that is plain and thought through. And another role for a king is to make sure that the evil or wicked advice is set aside and that those who are evil and wicked are removed from the situation so that, in fact, good may flourish. In Luke 14 and 7 to 11, Jesus actually taught based on Proverbs 25 and 6 and 7. What Jesus draws out is not merely a clever way of acting before the king to save embarrassment, but a real humility which is genuine and has eternal value. Here's what Jesus said. When Jesus noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited you both will come and say to you, give this man your seat. And then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. We are, even as leaders then, even should you be a king or a ruler, you are to understand that you are not at the top You are to have a real and a genuine humility, having been given a place that is of influence and importance, given it by God to know that your place is under him. A genuine humility. Jesus showed us this. He who was rightful king of all things and all peoples bowed to wash his disciples' feet. Continuing the lessons in humility, verse 8 of Proverbs 25 says not to rush into struggle or fight or court over what you have witnessed someone doing, for another witness may come forward to put a different light on it, and if so, you will be shamed. So this is not about being sure before you accuse, though that's wise. It is about being humble in discovering what actually occurred and not proud and self-opinionated. We are, if you like, drawing out what it is to be a servant king. Someone who knows what the role is, to understand deeply, to draw out a wise plan. Someone who also knows that their place is to serve under God, that they are a servant king under a servant king. We are not to take a position, whatever role we have in life, where we try to quickly do down a labor. We've seen that before. But here is a wise caution, and it speaks of that humility, that desire not to win over another, not to beat them, but rather to seek out what is true and to be cautious in bringing things forward in case you have misunderstood. Verse 9 in Proverbs 25 is also taught by Jesus when Christians dispute, go first to your neighbor. Here in Proverbs, this follows on from the humility lessons. Seek a resolution with the other person if you can, and don't seek to tattletale it to others. In line then with sorting things out between you and your neighbor, we are told a word in season or a timely word is like a gold or silver artwork. A bit of wisdom put into the right course, uh, to put someone in the right course and said to someone who wants to learn is like a gold earring. It's a nice picture to whisper in the ear of someone who needs to be just guided into the right course. If they're willing to listen, 
then that guiding, that whisper in their ear, uh, that caution is for them like a gold earring in their ear. Like a cool breeze on a hot day is a true messenger for those who send him, someone who is faithful and loyal in bringing the message. They are refreshed by him. The idea of this is that in the time of heat, say, an argument, a reply that is born out of faithful friendship is like a cooling breeze. On the other hand, if these are good ways to rule and to lead, uh, on the other hand, there are bad ways. To promise something and not deliver is like the promise of rain for the crops that doesn't arrive. Better to promise nothing, but deliver patiently. A king can be persuaded over time. A ruler can be persuaded over time. Sometimes it is patience that is needed. And even strong resistance can be overcome with a soft and a calm patience. The picture there of breaking a bone with a soft tongue is of the dog working away at the bone that it likes until it breaks. And so with careful words, with a word in season, with patience, we can in our situations of influence, even influence strong resistance. And that's an encouragement to us. Jesus said, you know, that we were always to pray and never give up. And if we are leaders in any role, even in our own lives, then we are always to pray and not give up. Patiently speak the gentle word, and who knows what may come. But be sparing. There is such a thing as too much honey. And here the picture is of honeyed words. It's good to say what is likely to win someone over, but you can have too much honey. The thing is to know how much is too much and when to give people space as well as when to give them company. And so the proverb says, don't always be knocking on your neighbor's door. They'll get sick of you. But if you come at the right times and if you speak at the right times and if you encourage them at the right times, then much may be achieved. Here then is what to avoid. Don't tell untrue tales about others. Don't rely on treacherous people in a time of trouble and don't be treacherous when trouble comes. Don't be all cheery with someone who is struggling in a time of trouble themselves. And don't be mean even to an enemy. In fact, help an enemy if they are in trouble and let the Lord sort out the reward, and let the enemy be sorry he was an enemy. Don't backbite or talk behind others' backs. That brings hate to you like a north wind storm. Harking back to chapter 21 and verse 9, we have the same proverb about living on the corner of a roof, and taken with the one above the meaning is, don't be a nagging person either. Instead, good news is welcome, even from a far country. Compare that proverb to the ones that come before it about nagging and backbiting from inside one's own home. Do you see what the picture of the servant king is here? Someone who delves in to understand the wisdom, who has a humility about their place, and who speaks the timely word, and has patience about it, who seeks to influence over time. Someone who isn't out to get you or backbiting and shows it over time. Good news from a far country is still good news and it refreshes the soul. And so the person who is trying to influence in this way brings good news, not backbiting, not nagging, They try to encourage towards the wisdom that they would like others to follow. And the other side of that is to always stand for good and don't give way to the wicked, or you become a polluted river, a muddied stream. 
Don't listen too much to honeyed words yourself. You know, if you're in a position of leadership, people may try to praise you. And Jesus warned about this too. Don't seek compliments too much or think too much about the honours you deserve. There is such a thing as too much honey. Instead, keep your own spirit controlled. A person with no control over their own spirit is like a fortress that has collapsed. See then what it is to be a servant king. Good news, compliments, honey, too much honey, time and patience, a soft word, a word to the wise, humility with others, deep wisdom, willingness to get wicked people out and stand for good, they all relate to acting as a servant king. And this is what the whole of Proverbs has been trying to teach us, trying to teach us to be, to be servant kings. Kings in the sense of ruling our own way and our own lives under God with reverence of him alone. And servants in the sense of working for the good under God, for everyone as far as possible. Servant kings. Well, there is the challenge and the teaching. Let us be servant kings under the servant king. Let us pray. Our loving Lord Jesus, we praise you as the servant king, the one who in such grace and kindness has come to serve us, not only in the washing of the feet or the prayers in Gethsemane, but to serve us by going to the cross to prepare a place for us, a place in your Father's heart and a place for all eternity. How we praise you, our servant King. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to separate out the wickedness from the good, that good might flourish within us. And help us, Lord, in our own situations of influence, whatever they may be, in our marriages, in our families, in our own lives, in our discussions and chat with others. Help us, Lord, to stand for what is good, to remove what is evil, and to be servant kings under our servant king. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.